Okay, we've got a, a slight problem, a problem we're going to look at here, right, which is a pole fixed to the ground in some way through friction being um, lifted up by a person through a rope and the rope has a tension T, poles at 45 degrees to the horizontal and the rope, the angle that the rope makes with a pole is 30 degrees. So you want to look at solving this um, using a graphical method first, then afterwards we'll try and do this with a analytical method. So let's start, we've got a, a space diagram here, let's start by filling in all the forces. So we know looking at this that there's going to be a tension force up here, we're going to have a pole, we're told it's got a mass of 20 kilograms, and that's all we're given. So we can make some assumptions, and the first is that the pole's mass at 20 kilograms will act through the centre of mass of the pole, which will be in the middle, and it will act vertically downwards according to gravity. So it's going to be 20 kilograms is 200 newtons. There it is there. Now also there's going to be uh, a detention and a reaction at the ground. So the pole is being held and pushed by the ground. And given that the tension is pushing to the left, the reaction at the ground will be opposite to it. So it'll be coming somewhere around to the right, but we don't know quite where. Now at this point in time, if we're going to do a graphical solution, it's probably good to remember that there is such a beast as the three-force rule. And the three-force rule says that if any object is held in equilibrium by only three forces, those the three forces must be concurrent. So it's the three-force rule. That objects in equilibrium three forces, those three forces must be concurrent, meaning that all pass through the same point. So forces have four, uh, or vector, all vector quantities have four, um, four major components to them. They have a sense, have a direction, a magnitude, and a point of application. Now the sense and direction are similar. The, the, the direction will give you the uh, Cartesian coordinate, and the sense will be the arrowhead sending it with you on that Cartesian coordinate. Is it heading downwards or upwards along that line of action of the vector? So in this case, we've got a reaction that has to pass through this point because that's where the pole contacts the ground. And it's got to contact somewhere around here. We don't quite know where. But the three-force rule tells us that somewhere these three forces, the reaction, the weight force and the tension must intersect. Now, these two forces are fixed, so if we extend the line of action of the 200 Newton force, it intersects the tensile force here, where I'll put that cross. Now we know the reaction has to come through the floor here, the base, and the only place it can go for it to keep this object in equilibrium and to intersect with the other two forces is straight through where the other two forces act. So I've got a fairly straight line there, it's reasonably vertical. I mean the accuracy of this will depend on a number of things, but this point in time, let's say that's our vertical line. There's the point of intersection. So the reaction will have to go from the base of the pole through the point of intersection of the weight force and the tensile force. So I'll draw it in here in red, and that will be the reaction. Let's call it R. Mm -hmm. Now this reaction over here is um, it's got a magnitude and it's got a direction and it has a sense. The sense is probably going to be upwards because it's resisting all these downward forces of the tension. And its magnitude we don't know yet. Alright, but let's have a quick look at it here we know that it's going to have an angle to the horizontal and given that all of these angles, I've measured them out, they're fairly correct um, this constitutes a, um, a free body diagram because all the forces are present and their relative proportions and their relative locations to each other are located there so it's a free body diagram so we could get our protractor and say okay um, this force is going to act this reaction R is going to act at an angle of, measuring it there, looks like about 60 degrees. So the angle that R makes to the horizontal 
going to be 60 degrees. So straight away from the graphical solution, we can determine what R is if our diagram is drawn to scale. Now, we don't know how big R is, so let's figure out how to, to work out how big R is. And we can do this reasonably simply if we set up a vector polygon. I'll just try and make this a little bit smaller so we can see a bit better. So let's set up a vector polygon, and that means we add the forces head to tail, and because the situation is in equilibrium, it means all the forces added head to tail will add up and finish at the point that they start. That's always the situation for a body that's in equilibrium. So let's start with that, and we'll know we've got a 200 Newton force down here, we know its magnitude and we know its direction. Now I'm going to have to create a scale, so let's use a scale of Let's say we've got a 200 Newton force, and I want to make it. Let's say make it about 40 newtons. So the scale is going to be 40 millimeters equals 200 newtons. You want to pick a scale that can fit on your page. You can simplify that to say that um, just cross off the zeros there. Four is 20, or one millimeter equals um, five newtons. So that's our scale. So the 200 millimeter will be represented, 200 Newton force, I beg your pardon, will be represented by a 40 millimeter line coming downwards like this. This is our 40 millimeter line, I'll just mark it out so you can see the graduations. It's going vertically downwards. Now we also know there's a tensile force coming across here. Now to determine what angle to the horizontal, and let me just grab an angle to the horizontal so we can get this about right, I'm using my protractor to do it. So if I set that up on 90 degrees, like this, make a little line here, make a little dot there, go 90 degrees, here's my horizontal line, and I'll just draw it like a dotted line, because it's only a construction line, and we're going to use it to reference our tensile force. The tensile force, looking back on here, if this is 45 degrees, the opposite angle to the horizontal will also be 45 degrees, so that angle there will be 45 degrees. Now that's 30, so the difference is 15 degrees, so there's a 15 degrees angle between the horizontal and the tension rope that's holding up the pole, it's 15 degrees, total being 45. So from the horizontal, let's get a 15 degree line, because we know that's a line of action of the tensile force. So there's 10 degrees and there's 15 degrees there. So from the centre, I'll draw a line down here and I'll just make it a dotted line because I don't know exactly how long this line is going to be. But along that line of action that I've just drawn over here, the tension force will act. And we're going to head to tail it, but we don't know how long it is, so I'm not going to put the arrow head in yet. Now we also know that there's got to be a line that returns back to the start, which is the third force, the reaction R over here, and we know that it acts on a line of 60 degrees to the horizontal. So along the, from this point, the beginning line over here at the top of our force polygon, we're going to have to determine 60 degrees, a line of 60 degrees to the horizontal. So 60 degrees will mean that it needs to come 30 degrees to the vertical if it's 60 degrees to the horizontal. So let's go 30 there. That's 30 degrees to the vertical. Draw our line across here like this. Again, a light line. And this is our vector polygon. So now we know that the only way that these three forces can join head to tail and finish up at the start is if they appear in this proportion. So that angle is 60 degrees. 60 degrees. We know this angle here obviously must be 30 because it's a complements the triangle, right angle triangle. We know that this angle here this angle there is 15 degrees. Remember that was the angle that we calculated up here. And so if we put the arrow here now, 
we can safely say that that there becomes the distance or the magnitude of that when taken to scale is the size of the tensile force. That's the tensile force T. And this is the reaction R. And it's got to come from the end of the tensile force back to the starting point there. So let's solve it. And to do that, all we need to do is use our scale, which is one millimeter is five newtons, and measure. So I'll measure up here. Try and make it a bit bigger for you so you can see my measuring a little bit better. Okay. Right, so let's measure it. Okay, so it looks like it's just about 29 millimetres, looking very carefully there, about 29 millimetres. So T is going to equal to 29 millimetres multiplied by 5 newtons per 1 millimetre, which is my scale. So 5 times 29, or 520s, is 100, and oh, 520 is 100, and 59s are 45, so that's 145 newtons. So that's the answer for T, according to our graphical solution, 145 newtons. And looking at it, uh, we've got a force of 200 newtons coming down. It's not unreasonable if we wanted to check. It's not completely unreasonable that it should be 145. And it's a good idea just to make sure that the answers make sense in the right order of magnitude. So, OK, 145 newtons for T. And now um, let's work out R. So we'll measure R and we'll say... Oh, one more thing. Because T is a vector, we need to say where it's acting. So T is acting down at 15 degrees in that direction. So I'll indicate that with that arrow. Now let's go for R. I'm measuring from the top there. It looks like it's about 56, 56 millimetres. So we can say R equals 56 millimetres times 5 newtons per millimetre. And that's going to give us 5 times 56, all right, well 5 times 50 is 250, 6 times the 30, so that's 280 newtons. Yeah. Um, 280 newtons is the answer, and it's going to be acting at 60 degrees upwards to the right from the horizontal. And that completely describes R and T using a graphical solution. So it's a fairly quick way of doing this. And you can have a quick look now. You can see there's the solution. The problem done using a force polygon. Okay?